and now I'm even showing you a third method for doing classes. Quick review once again with classes. A class is a blueprint from which you can create objects. The classes have attributes, which are basically described as nouns, and in our case, variables. Most of the time, more often than not, at least for what we'll be doing in this course, the variables and the attributes will be called private. The class also has actions it can do called methods. We think in terms of verbs, and with rare exception, sorry about the caps, these will be known as public descriptions versus private. That which is created from the blueprint or class is called either an object or an instant. And on page 130 of your textbook, I'll go ahead and mention this also, and again for those of you who are, are very, very visual learners, on page 130 of your textbook they'll refer to some other terms that will often come up with these kinds of methods, and I just want you to have the vocabulary down pat. Sometimes you'll hear something that is called a mutator or a mutation method. You'll hear, you'll hear both of these, mutator, mutation, I'll take it either way. If you've got something, the word mutate, of course, means to change something. So if you're assigning a value to an object or changing it, they are called mutator methods. So these that say set and get, excuse me, these that, that all say set, like set name and set GPA and such, are called mutators because you're, you're changing a value of something, of one of the, one of the variables in, in the class's object. If you have something where you are simply getting the information, they, some call, they sometimes call them access methods, where you're just getting it. Uh, no change is involved here. You're just getting the information. So the ones that are called, and I probably put this in the bad, bad, uh, bad place on the video, the ones called get name, get GPA, etc., would be called access methods. The other one that you haven't seen yet, and this is a new guy in this video, is something called a constructor. What actually happens when you go in and do this statement that says new, what you're actually doing is you're setting aside a partition in memory where you're actually just setting up, in this case, Java Dude as a new student to class object and there are spots there for name, GPA, and hours. They're simply made empty. In fact, technically, I think they're set to zeros and to just an empty string, just like a blank place. I think technically that's what happens, depending on your language that you're using C++, Java, whatever. So I wanted to show you something here, and again, sorry for the scrolling. I wanted to show you something new here that's a little different, and this particular kind of method. It's a method because it's got the parentheses around it. You don't see an action verb, but this is something that's unique. This is called a constructor. And I actually have two constructors in this example. I wanted to go ahead and show you this, whether or not the book went, went through it very thoroughly or not, because I want to show you how this works. Both of these are called constructors. The very absolute characteristic about a constructor that will be, that will make it really, really obvious, and you may see this just by what I've selected, in this video. Notice that the class name is called student3. Notice that the constructor names, by coincidence, not really, are also called constructor, are also called student3. Here's the deal with constructors. The constructor always, no exception, has the same name as the class does. And here's what happens, what's really interesting about it. Whenever you declare or instantiate, they use a fan fancy word for instance as a verb, when you instantiate or create an object, what Java does and C++ does also, it automatically looks to see if there is a method called student2. If there isn't one, it leaves everything set to nil or zero or blank. If there is a constructor, your computer will automatically assign some values to it. Here's an example where there's nothing passed in. You'll even notice right here that you don't even see the word public in front of these, or void, or, or anything like that. And I darn well had better put the word public in front of that. But again, notice that there is no void, no int, just public, and the name of the class. So if I've got a constructor under a class called student3, it'll be public, name of constructor, 
and public name of constructor. Now you can put, if you want to, you can put nothing in parentheses. And in this case, what would happen, it's a little crazy, but I wanted to show you the logic of Java. It would automatically assign name to Michael, Michael to name rather, GPA as 3.5 and the hours as number 50. You can also pass in information. So if I wanted all at one time, instead of having to do set name, set GPA, set hours individually as I've done before, if I want to take all three of these guys and send them in all at once, I could take all three of those statements, put them right here. Now the order does make a difference. You can't switch them around. They've got to be sent in in the same order that they're declared here. And I could assign the name and the GPA and the hours automatically to the class. Again, this will seem confusing at first, maybe a lot, because it's very, a very new set of concepts and a big, big jump in the chapter, as I said it would be. Let's take a look at the program. You're familiar with the get and set already from the other videos. Here's show student. Notice right here that I have a student 3 declared called Java Dude, and I say new student 3. Now again, remember how this works. Java dude normally would be an empty set of boxes down here at the bottom of my screen. But because student 3's class now has a constructor, and because this one's blank, it will go up here. It always tries to find a constructor. If it doesn't see one, it leaves it blank. But in this case, you see that student 3, the, the method constructor, has Michael, GPA, and 50. So without my writing anything down, Michael, 3.5, and 50, will automatically be stored right here just by virtue of this statement being called up. So that statement right there, because there's a constructor specifically defined, will automatically put that information in there. Now notice what's happened with Java Girl. In this case, I have the constructor, but in this case, I've passed in some specific values. Mary, 2.4. 35. So when I take Mary 2.4 and 35 and I look at that constructor, if I can get this to work right visually, it will take Mary 2.435. It has to have some variables to catch these, so the Mary becomes the value of n purely to be passed into the method, the constructor. 2.4 is the value of g, 35 is the value of h, and they're assigned to these private variables. So what will happen, of course, in this case, here I scroll, I'll have Mary 2.4 and 35 automatically assigned. Now, when I print out the information, again, notice the difference in these printouts along here. If I put Java dude dot get name, and be sure you have the parentheses there for the method call, and the parentheses for print line, so there are two sets of parentheses. Java dude get name is going to print out Michael. Java girl dot get name is going to print out Mary. So it's just a matter of the syntax, getting the semicolons and parentheses and all that underway to make sure it's clear. Hopefully this helps you get, get a nice introduction to classes and likely for my next video I'm going to actually put something up in video format that actually goes through one of your exercises with you where normally you might go, duh, I've got this information, but I don't know where to start on writing the program myself. And that's my goal for the next video. And I hope these help out. Let me know. I love having feedback even if it's negative. Let me know if this helps out.